and now very complicated things. We should a little bit deal with the terms and the characterization. What is a science center? What is a museum? Science museum. What is the difference? When we read the literature, we find these different terms: museum for science and technique, research museum, museum for natural history, museum for natural sciences, and also the science center. But uh, these are very different <coughs> terms. According to the rules of the International Council of Museums, the Museum for Science and Technique has always certain functions and tasks. A museum is always to have the functions, collection, research, presentation, education, documentation. These five important tasks. If you have a science center, it's definitely not necessary to have permanent collections. But what you should have is many very different attractive experiments in different fields of science and techniques. Museums for natural sciences differ in a great way because museums for natural sciences are, for example, museums for, for medicine, for biology, for zoology, for oceanography. And museums for natural history are, as the name says, museums related to the history. You have other museums, museums of cultural history, the art history, the natural history. And it is a history and development of the nature. That's a specific task, but it's different to all the others. And the research museums, are mostly connected to the university. For example, in Germany we have some research museums, the Senckenberg Museum in Frankfurt, we have the museum, a research museum at the Humboldt University in Berlin, and this is a specific thing. It's a more a university museum, but nevertheless open to the public. But the research is in the foreground. Now let's have a, uh, have a little bit of comparison. On the one hand, the museums, and on the other hand, the science center. Museums relate to the classical task of a museum according to the icon rules. Science centers have no permanent collection or presentation. And it is a challenge for all, to all of the experts in museums to have and to develop guidelines for a permanent collection. You cannot collect anything you want. You have to have a line, you have to have a rule, and then to collect for the permanent use in the museum. And there must be, in the museum must be a documentation. Documentation means every piece and every object has to be documented and described inside the collection, so that when we have the possibility, for example, to make an exhibition of it, we have these things and can put them together. And then the other task, the research, but the research in a museum is normally, if this is not a research museum in particular, uh, this research is always connected to the permanent presentation. All what will be presented in the museum has Firstly, to be researched, documented and researched, and then given to the permanent uh, presentation, though that the communication and the education will be enabled, made easier. And then we have the other task of communication and education. But what does this mean? Every object in a museum and every group of objects has a specific language and it's necessary to develop a language between the presentation and the visitors and it is very specific according to the kind of the objects. And probably you remember 
in former times, uh, I think, um, already uh, 10, 50 years ago, people always talked about museum pedagogy. And now the term has changed into communication and education. I will say a word. Pedagogy relates normally to a teacher and to a child, a child. But education means all group of society, the adults too. And therefore, all of you do in a museum must be related to the different levels of society, to the different groups, not only to the children. And if you remember, in former times, it was sometimes so that there was a guide in the museum, and the guide spoke to the people, and there was no dialogue. And the dialogue is the first, what we should have in the museum, always the dialogue. Not the teacher to the visitors, but all together to the object, related to the object. And there are other possibilities, for example, the experimentation and attractive interactive methods. But interactive in this kind does not mean to press a button or so. That's not enough, it's not interactive. We had it in former times in Germany too, in many museums, and many people thought, if we have many buttons and people can press them, it's enough. But it's no, not an experience. Now to the science centers. The science centers gave very, very good examples to the museums. They gave the impulses to the museum, what the museums do, because they were very creative in their experiments and related not to a specific collection, but to different fields of natural sciences, as natural history, medicine, chemistry, astronomy, according to the challenges of the society. And that's very interesting because the challenges of the society are very contemporary. And it's not only related to this. And there's a very interesting relationship, interrelationship, between the science centers and the industry, for example, because the science centers like, develop future and experiments. And these experiments can support the industry in developing instruments as well for all of the people. It's very interesting, very important. And the great advantage of the science centers is you can make the cooperation with different institutions outside their own building. It's very important. It's not so easy in museums, but the science centers have this advantage.